The quality of the light that surrounds us affects our lives, sometimes for the better, sometimes not. Now data from the U.S. Nimbus 7 satellite reveal an alarming change in the light reaching us from the sun. The ozone layer, which shields our Earth from sunlight's harmful radiation, is being depleted. For each 1% of ozone lost, there is a 2% increase in potentially damaging ultraviolet B radiation. Within the last decade, this protective screen has thinned out and developed virtual holes. The result? An alarming increase in skin cancer. Now, a joint U.S.-Israel project offers evidence that ozone depletion may have even more far-reaching effects. Researchers here at Israel's Weizmann Institute of Science and at the U.S. Department of Agriculture have demonstrated that increased UVB radiation interferes with photosynthesis, the process by which plants convert sunlight into energy and ultimately food. To study how radiation affects photosynthesis, the Israeli scientists chose a miniature plant called duckweed, which is especially efficient in absorbing nutrients, and in the case of these experiments, radioactive trace elements. To simulate radiation penetrating the ozone layer, the researchers subjected the radioactive duckweed to 14 different wavelengths of light, ranging from ultraviolet to far red, for periods from 15 minutes to 48 hours. In plants exposed to excess levels of UVB radiation, the damage soon appeared. At the USDA's research station in Beltsville, Maryland, a team headed by Dr. Otar K. Matu pinpoints the effect of the UVB on a specific protein called 32KD, believed to be at the heart of photosynthesis. Irradiated plants are ground up separated on a gel to trace the 32KD protein. Results subsequently reveal that the highest degree of 32KD degradation occurs in the ultraviolet range. Photosynthesis operates like a well-run factory producing food for the plant. As part of this finely tuned procedure, UVB acts to break down the 32KD protein. The plant then makes more protein to maintain a balance. But when there is excess UVB radiation in the available light, the plant just can't turn out 32KD fast enough to replenish the amount being destroyed, and the entire process of photosynthesis breaks down. Now that we've identified a target for ultraviolet B penetration into the plant cell, we can study ways how to protect this protein from its degradation and in that way protect the process of photosynthesis. Moving from the lab to the field, a University of Maryland team simulates various states of ozone depletion by exposing vegetation to UV lights, similar to tanning salon sun lamps. Many of these plants flourish on Hawaiian mountaintops, subjected to some of the most intense sunlight in the world. The scientists hope to identify the hardy genes that determine radiation resistance, and then to incorporate these traits into more vulnerable crops. The Israel-American research effort dramatically illustrates how damage to just one minute protein ultimately can affect the vital processes on which life on Earth depends. vegetation at work. With no noise, no pollution, and no cost, this natural chemical factory is producing nutrients with energy derived from the sun. Taking their cue from nature, Weizmann experts are developing solar lasers for inexpensive, environmentally safe sun power. With the completion of the Canadian Institute for the Energies and Applied Research, 
first described in spotlight number nine, the project has moved into high gear. 64 of these computer-controlled mirrors collect sunlight, concentrate the beams to 3,000 times the intensity of the sun on Earth, and focus them on a tower target. Inside the laser lab, a secondary concentrator boosts the brightness to 30,000 times, which exceeds half the concentration at the surface of the sun itself. The incredibly intense light, confined within this instrumentation, is used to power a new Weizmann-developed solar laser, which presently offers the greatest efficiency at the lowest price. Levels of up to 400 watts have already been achieved here, with a goal of 1,000 watts well in sight. In Israel, where the distance between sunny deserts and industrial sites is small, the solar laser beams could be relayed to nearby chemical plants. Their sun power would replace expensive polluting fuels in these energy intensive processes. Solar lasers with projected applications in industry and in space are only one of several promising new technologies emerging from the Weizmann Institute's advanced new research facility, where scientists are harnessing sun power for tomorrow's world. Plenty of sunshine and a well-balanced diet. Generations of children have been raised on this familiar formula for building strong bones. But sometimes, nature's prescription is just not enough. Kidney dialysis patients, like 13-year-old Shai, often suffer from a crippling bone disease called renal osteodystrophy. His body's growth has been hindered by damaged kidneys, which failed to convert bone-building vitamin D from sunshine into the hormones necessary for good health. A strong skeleton depends on healthy kidneys turning out sufficient quantities of the hormones that help create firm bones, kidneys suffer damage and stop producing these essential elements, our skeleton weakens and may even collapse. To help reverse this destructive scenario, a group of Weizmann Institute scientists headed by Professor Samuel Edelstein and Yehuda Mazur, working together with Israel's Teva Pharmaceutical Company, developed a synthetic derivative of vitamin D. Their drug, Alpha D3, the first original Israeli drug to be formally approved for general human use, gives Mother Nature a much needed boost. When disease strikes, our system's normal balance is upset, and more bone tissue is destroyed than the body can replenish. Alpha D3 is proving effective in stemming further deterioration. <laughs> 